In order to survive, we need money. But how much money should a Christian have? I mean, does money reveal that God has blessed you, or does having a lot of money reveal a lack of faith in God to provide? Does it even really matter how much money you have, or can you have too much money? I mean, these are some questions that I think it's important to wrestle with if you're a Christian. But what I've noticed is that Christians often make one of two errors. The first error is looking to wealth for your happiness. Unfortunately, many Christians have built their lives with the belief that accumulating a lot of stuff, having a lot of money, having a nice house, having a big house, having multiple houses will make them happy. A lot of Christians sort of believe the American idea that having a lot of stuff is the key to happiness and success and freedom. Unfortunately, that is a popular opinion, certainly in American culture, and it's a popular opinion among many Christians. But Christians who think this way aren't really listening to Jesus because Jesus had some strong warnings about money and wealth and what it can do to us. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, it's very hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. I'll say it again, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Jesus was saying that if you're rich, you need to be careful because it's so hard when you have a lot of stuff to really trust in God. And Jesus made another important warning that we need to listen to as well. No one, Jesus said, can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Jesus says, look, you're fooling yourself. If your life is all about making money or you spend all of your time getting wealthier and getting more stuff and trying to get more power in a worldly kind of way, Jesus says, look, you're fooling yourself. If you think you can make your life about God and money, it doesn't work that way. We can only serve one master. And so we need to make a choice. Is God the source of our joy and happiness or is money? And so Christians who just sort of buy this kind of American lie, this new uh, American dream that many Americans hold to that money's the key to happiness, Christians that do that are misguided. And even worse, they're living in sin if they're making money into an idol. So clearly, wealth is not the key to happiness. And just because you have a lot of money doesn't mean that God is, has, has blessed you in the sense that you're right with God. If you have a lot of money, it doesn't mean that you're living a life of faith. It just means that you've got a lot of money. But there's another error that Christians make. The error is that believing that poverty equals holiness. As a reaction against American culture with its excesses and Christians who kind of build their lives around money, some Christians will almost hold up poverty as the ideal. That somehow if you have less money than your friends or the people at your church, or maybe if your house isn't as nice as your neighbors, that that somehow automatically makes you a person of great faith or spiritually mature. You know, some of these people will look down on people who have more because they'll think, well, they're not as generous as I am or they can't live as simply as I do. But the Bible never holds up poverty as the ultimate goal either. In fact, if you look at the Bible, you'll find that some Christians, I mean, some people of faith were pretty well off. They were wealthy. I mean, take Abraham, for example. Abram was very rich in livestock, silver, and gold. Abraham is the example of faith in the Old Testament. He trusted God in incredible ways, and he wasn't poor. He was wealthy. He was like crazy wealthy. In fact, Abraham and his nephew had so much stuff that they had to separate because there wasn't room for both of them where they were living. And so God, obviously, he did bless Abraham and he gave him a lot of stuff. And so the point there is to say, look, just it's not like poverty makes you spiritual. Poverty doesn't make you a person of great faith either. Just like wealth isn't an indicator that God is happy with you, poverty isn't an indicator that God is happy with you. Now, let me say, it certainly is better off to be a poor person who fears the Lord than a rich person who doesn't think they need God. We need to listen to Jesus' warnings. But neither wealth nor poverty really means that God is pleased with how you're living your life. So for Christians, how much money should Christians have? Well, I got to admit, there's no easy answer to that. It's, it's not like the Bible says this is what your income should be or anything like that. But I 
I think there's a proverb that I found very helpful in my life to, to help me get my mind around this and to think, you know, God, what should I want? What should I expect in my life when it comes to money? Oh God, I beg two favors from you. Let me have them before I die. First, help me never to tell a lie. Second, give me neither poverty nor riches. Give me just enough to satisfy my needs. For if I grow rich, I may deny you and say, who is the Lord? And if I am too poor, I may steal and thus insult God's holy name. I love the perspective of this proverb. He says, God, give me neither poverty. And most of us would say, yeah, sign me up for that, God. No poverty. I don't want that. But he also says, God, don't give me riches. Why is that? Well, he has the same rationale as Jesus. He says, if I'm too wealthy, it's going to be hard to trust in God. And so we need to think about that, especially if you're an American, if you're a European, if, if you're a wealthy individual, and many of us are wealthy compared to the rest of the world, we need to be careful because if we have a lot, it's going to be hard to depend and trust on God. And so maybe we should say, God, give me, don't give me riches. Don't make me super wealthy because that's going to pay a hefty it, it, that's going to be a hefty price to pay in my life and in the life of my family is we trust in money and stuff more than we trust in you. But also, I love the rationale. He says, God, please don't give me poverty either. Because the Proverbs writer says, look, if I'm poor, then I, I might be forced to steal or do things that aren't going to really bring honor to your name. And I can resonate with that. You know, I've got I've got a wife. I've got four children. Uh, if I was out of money, if I didn't have a place to stay, I don't know what sort of decisions I would make. It would certainly be easy for me to do some things that wouldn't be too honoring for God to provide for my family. And so the proverb writer says, God, give me neither poverty nor riches. And that just might be the answer that many of us need to hear. That, you know, God in his wisdom, he might bless you with a lot of money. And if he does, then praise him for that. And, you know, enjoy some of the good gifts that come with money. But mainly use your money to help those who are in need and to help those and not only help those in, who are in need, but also to build God's kingdom. And if God doesn't give you much, you know, learn to trust God and thank God for what he has given you and work to improve yourself in life. But I just really love that perspective of, the, of Proverbs 30 that says, God, give me neither poverty nor riches. Again, there's no easy answer, but I think Proverbs 30 is helpful to start the conversation about how much money should Christians have.